Today I'm going to show you how to sew a really cute and easy baby taggy teether lovey toy. It is a really fast and easy sewing project and the links below in the description box will take you to these printable pattern pieces. You can add anything you want to it. The loops for the tags here will hold baby teether rings. You can add elastic like I've done to add a pacifier or you can use little rings to put clip-on toys, which I'll also show you here. These have little openings that you can hook around the loops and you can get these really inexpensive on Amazon or get the little baby plastic rings at local stores. You can clip other toys to it. It can be their lovey blanket when they're sleeping, whatever you want it for. Once you have the pattern pieces cut out, go ahead and trace them onto your fabric and cut them out. The back fabric, I'm using a fleece. In the front, I'm using a cotton that I had custom printed, so it has some stretch to it, but I suggest using a flannel or a cotton fabric that doesn't. You're also going to need eight five-inch pieces of ribbon or elastic like I have here. This is fold over elastic, but you can use any kind, and I'm using that so that I can attach a passy to it. Here is a wooden three-inch teether ring. You can add toys as long as there's something like a circle or what, what have you like that, that you can put a piece of ribbon through and it will hold. You can attach anything you want to this. These are the example of the little plastic rings that I use. You can get them really inexpensive, like I said, on Amazon or at your local store. So go ahead and get your four block pieces and lay them out the way you want them to lay. And then you are going to get the first top two and lay them with the right sides of the fabric together and sew along that seam here on the left. Do the same thing for the bottom two of your squares. Sewing using about a 1 4 inch seam allowance. You can see here, I am lining up my fabric with this place on my foot of my machine to give me a guide to sew. Make sure you stop and start with the back stitch. Once you have these sewn, go ahead and open it up and press out the seams. And after you've done that, you want to get the top piece and lay it with the right side down on the bottom piece, just like I did here so that our designs stay the way they are. You wanna match up those center seams we just sewed and place a pin or a clip in that area. It's really important that those are lined up so that your squares are nice and even on your finished blanket. Now take it to the sewing machine and sew using a 1 4 inch seam allowance right across the top. Go ahead and open this up and press out your seams. And you can see right in the middle how important it was to line up those middle seams when we were sewing so that it creates a nice corner here where all four of our squares match evenly. Now you're going to take this to your iron if you want to and open the seam up in the back and press it flat. This will take away any bulk that you might have. It is optional, but if you want a neater finish, go ahead and do this part. You'll notice the top and bottom seams automatically flip over to the left or the right. You can leave those like they are. Now you're going to turn this over and get your pattern piece and make all eight of the markings as guide marks that I have put on the pattern piece so that you know where to place your ribbon. You can see I put a small mark right on the edge of the fabric, just big enough so I can see it. It won't show when we're all done, so don't worry about it. Now you're gonna get your ribbon and you're gonna fold it in half to meet the two raw edges at the end with the pretty side of the ribbon on the outside. You're gonna place that ribbon right on top of each of your markings and pin or clip it in place. You can use any kind of ribbons, color coordinate it however you want. You can change the placement of where you put these if you want to. If you don't wanna use eight, you could use four, however you wanna do it and you just keep working your way around until all of the pieces are placed. 
If you're adding a toy or a teether ring like I am doing, you're going to get the ribbon, put it through your toy or teether ring, and fold it just like you would all the other ribbon pieces, and then place that on your marking guide just like you would the rest of them. Then you're going to get the back part for your lovey blanket, put the right side facing down so that you can sandwich all of these ribbon pieces right in between your two layers of fabric. As you're going around, hold your ribbon in place and adjust your pins or clips so that it can attach all three layers of this fabric and ribbon together. After I make sure my ribbon is nice and secure, I'm using a minky fleece and my front fabric is kind of stretchy as well so it will shift on me. So I'm going to go ahead and put a whole bunch more pins or clips all the way around, but leaving about a three inch opening all the way on the side. That's to help me remember that we are not going to sew that area closed so that we can flip this right side out when we're done sewing. So using about a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, let's sew all the way around this, starting at where our whole opening is going to start. I like to match up the side of my machine's foot to the side raw edge of my fabric to use as my sewing guide. If you haven't sewn corners yet, all you need to do is get to that corner and leave your needle in the fabric. Lift your presser foot, rotate your fabric, put the presser foot back down and continue sewing. Make sure you stop and start with the back stitch and I'm going to stop sewing here in a second so that I can leave that hole opening right there on the side. Now you want to clip all four corners of this square right up to the stitches but not cutting through your stitches. We do this so that way when we flip it right side out, there's no bulkiness at those corners, so the corners will poke out nice and crisp. Then going through the whole opening, go ahead and turn this right side out. If you've attached a toy or a teether ring, make sure your whole opening is big enough for you to fit that through before you start sewing. I like to smoothen out all of my seams and poke out my corners with a chopstick. You can use a pin or whatever you have on hand if you need to. Just make sure you don't poke too hard so you don't go through your stitches. Once all the ends and corners are all smoothened out, all we need to do now is go ahead and close that whole opening at the bottom by putting your two fingers in and pulling that fabric apart. It will automatically flip your fabric inward so that it's flush with the rest of the fabric on the outside. Then you're going to take this to your machine and sew all the way around top stitching using about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. If you want to go a little bit more to 1 4 of an inch, that is completely okay. And you go all the way around this right close to the edge. If you are a beginner sewer and not too confident in top stitching yet, that's okay. You can just sew that opening closed if you want to, but it, you can you do it by hand as well using a blind ladder stitch if you don't want that seam to show, but baby's really not gonna notice or care. And just to talk fabric for a second while we're sewing, I recommend using cotton, flannel, or fleece for this for beginner sewers. If you use a minky fabric like I have done, or stretch fabric, that can move around a lot while you're sewing with a regular sewing machine. So I wouldn't suggest you starting with that unless you've sewn with it before so you know how it works. 
Using an absorbent fabric for the back of this is definitely ideal because if it's going to be used by a baby, they're gonna drool, especially if they're still teething. So you wanna have an absorbent fabric on the back like flannel, fleece, terry, or even a towel. Um, so that way it helps with that drooling. If you wanna go ahead and attach the pacifier, you're gonna to go to the elastic piece that we added. You can use any kind of elastic you have on hand. All you're going to do is have a passy that has a hole in it, big enough to put your elastic through, put the hoop of the elastic through it, and then you're going to get your taggy blanket and bring it all the way through that elastic hole like I'm doing here and just pull it all the way through. And I don't attach this while we're sewing so that way the passy can be cleaned and it can be changed out if it's needed. And that's it. And if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave me a comment below if you have a pattern you, and with a tutorial that you wanna see. I choose two subscribers every single week this year and I give them a free $50 gift card to use on my patterns and I make the pattern and tutorial you wanted for free. I hope you enjoyed my sewing tutorial. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You have no idea how much it really helps and you'll be notified anytime a new pattern is released and that is super easy to follow because I gear towards beginners. I have patterns for children, for babies, for household stuff, for adults, clothing, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you check us out at alohasewingcompany.com and before you go, mahalo.